Epistasis occurs when the expression of alleles at one locus masks or modifies the expression of other alleles at another locus. Epistasis also explains why multiple different genotypes can lead to the same phenotype. Above there is a blue phenotype that is made possible by a homozygous dominant A and a homozygous recessive B and a heterozygous dominant A and homozygous recessive B. And for or the orange phenotype, there's a homozygous dominant A and a homozygous dominant B and a heterozygous dominant A and a heterozygous dominant B. Say we had an exotic dog that if it has a copy of indominant A allele, it will be blue. Or if also it has a copy of dominant A allele and the dominant B allele, it will be orange. If the dog has neither a dominant A or a dominant B allele, it will just be white. The dog's exotic coat color is controlled by inhibitor genes at each junction between each color. The inhibitor recessive A is just saying that if the dog had a recessive A gene, there wouldn't be a possibility it could turn blue. Uh, and also, the next junction over is the inhibitor recessive B, and it also says the same. If a dog has a recessive B, it wouldn't be able to turn orange. It would just stay blue. Epistatic relationships follow a certain ratio in every type of epistasis. This is demonstrated by the cross between two parents who are heterozygous for both A and B alleles. The results of the cross are nine orange puppies, four white puppies, and three blue puppies. Just a special note, when epistasis is not occurring, the ratio will always be nine to three to three to one. If you recall our cross, the resulting ratios are nine to four to three. And when referencing our table, 9 to 4 to 3 is a single recessive epistasis. When crossing another two parents, the resulting ratios are 8 white puppies, 4 blue puppies, and 4 orange puppies. When referencing this ratio to our table, there is no existent form of epistasis for this ratio. And this is possible because this is not a dihybrid cross.